What it do, baby boo? I'm like an orgasm to your ears. One, two, three, uh! My baby don't mess around because, huh? All right, so I want to start off this episode with uh, quoting Kevin Durant. Are we really going to go here? Yeah. Okay, so in a recent interview, Kevin Durant said, and I quote, I'm a snag. I'm a snaggy snag. Um, let's, in, let's introduce the show and then get into this. Okay. Okay. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Thank what you guys that? for joining us for yet another... What is this going to go under? Porn video. <laughs> Rhinos and aliens after dark. <laughs> uh, we're, we're late, but we, we still want to talk about the finals, how it was quicker than nobody expected. and <laughs> Uh-huh. Go on. And we just want to give our thoughts, like always, uh, give a couple of sports updates overall, and just give our thoughts on the standout performances, the notable games, moments, stuff like that. What we think this is going to entail for the future, free agency, most notably LeBron James. So uh, this, you could sum this episode up as the Warriors sweep the Cavaliers, and LeBron James is going to go to... Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Bro, I got a real question for you. Okay, what you, what's up? What do you think of my mic? It's wearing a hat and a bandana. I wanted to ignore this, this subject altogether, but... Uh, it's pretty gangster. It looks something, bro. It looks something. It's definitely something. It, it's it's something special, bro. I agree with somethingness. I, I've never seen somebody rock that kind of hat and a bandana. You know what I'm together. saying? Like, it's, he, he's, a, he's a trendsetter. He's a trailblazer. At least the colors somewhat match your jersey, so at least there's that. Boom! Thanks for pointing that out. Where's the, where's the camera? Uh, yeah. uh, uh. Besides Who this... Who got the best girlfriend in the world? This ugly ass. Probably Selena Gomez. I mean, Justin Bieber. <laughs> but who got the second best girlfriend in the world? That's right, your boy. Me. Boom. Bro, I can't believe she went back to him. I thought they broke up again. Okay, we're just going... Name the quote, bro. Oh, I'm by the way... Snake. By the way... Francis Mandrala, like always, and to my right back at it again is Sebastian. Okay, so what's the quote? All right. Kevin Durant said uh, to Yahoo Sports NBA. Check this out. Yahoo is the fuck that shit. Check this out. This man said, oh my God, this man said, I feel like it's easy to be the best player when you don't have any good players around you. So he was saying this about LeBron James? Well, it must be. I feel like it's harder to stand out when you have great players around you. I pride myself on standing out wherever I am. Okay, so one thing. To his defense, yeah, it's a little bit harder to stand out when you have Kevin Durant. I mean, when you have uh, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson around you. Sure, that's and a fair point. three other all-stars. Yeah, that's a fair point. But to that I say, they also share the ball pretty well. So it's great. They're, they're, they're good at feeding the hot hand. But with that being said... It must also be easier to be the best player on the best team ever assembled when you're playing the worst team. Uh, one of the worst of, teams one of the to worst ever team. make the finals. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just saying you're a bitch for that. Okay, so my my argument to counteract that is he has a valid point 100% of the time. Perfect example, without even talking about LeBron James, look at Kevin Love. He was on the Minnesota Timberwolves. And he was putting up incredible numbers. The moment he comes to a team with a Kyrie Irving and a LeBron James, he looks like a shell of his former self. Of course, and that, and that's but that's why I think he's a bitch for having for even trying to like downgrade LeBron's greatness or or downplay LeBron's greatness just because his team was lesser. Like it doesn't matter. If LeBron was the only good player on the, on, the, on the Cavaliers. Because LeBron is the best player in the NBA right now. LeBron could join this current Warriors team and be the best player on that team. But which is he what wouldn't irks, put up the same numbers. But he would still put up better numbers all around. Which is what irks me about Kevin Durant's moment. Uh, his quote. Because better numbers than what? Than who? What are we comparing it to? All of them. You, I don't think he would put up better numbers than Kevin Durant. LeBron can put better numbers than all of them. He wouldn't work in their system. LeBron, so. okay, forget points. LeBron would be the best player on that team. He could be. It's not even close. I think it is. It's not even close. Listen. Uh, okay, we're going we're gonna to prove that theory wrong when we get to the individual stats, but continue. 
No, you can't prove it or disprove it. It's more like common sense. He's the best player in the world, so why, why wouldn't he be the better, best player on that team? But some would make the case he isn't the best player in the world. Some would be wrong. Okay. <laughs> now, okay, I just want to point this out. I think KD was also making the point for why MJ is better than LeBron James. Because MJ put up similar numbers to a certain degree, and he had a much better team than LeBron James. Which, is, which, which again, goes back to why it pisses me off that he's trying to downplay someone's greatness. You literally joined a 73-win team... Who and beat you? Who beat you in order to beat the man whose stats you say are not impressive because of his surrounding cast? You just won back to back titles and back to back finals MVP. And instead of focusing on your accomplishments, you're trying to, I guess, show your accomplishments or throw it in people's faces, but at the same time, doing it by downplaying someone else's greatness. Someone else's who, who, whose greatness is so much more accomplished so you- than yours. So you're mad not necessarily that he took the shot, but more so he took the shot when he did and he had all these other routes to go? No, listen. What I'm mad at is he could have easily kept it at what he said at the end. I pride myself on being the best player wherever I go. It, it, you didn't it, like the it, shade. It's Yeah, yeah. It, okay. it, the bragging, whatever. You want back-to-back ch- uh, titles and back-to-back finals MVP, who wouldn't brag? My thing is you ha- you felt the need to throw LeBron James in there or you know imply that that's because he, he didn't say by name but let's just be serious here he was talking about lebron james's numbers on the shitty cavaliers team yeah okay i i i i see where you're coming from and i agree from that perspective on yeah. principle okay so we're going to before we move any further into that i do want to point out three major highlights f- for my perspective for sports Simona Halep, female tennis player, she won her first Grand Slam title ever, which if you're a fan of tennis and have been keeping up with her, she is one of those players that has been in the game for a very long time, consistently at the top of the ranks, consistently going to deep in tournaments, and she finally wins one. Now, of course, it wasn't against Serena Williams, so there's always that asterisk, but she still got it done. Simona Halep! Yes. Uh, (laughs) Moving on, we have Rafa Nadal, who... He is without a doubt the best player ever on a single surface because he just won his 11th French Open title. He is now 11-0 in the finals at the French Open, and this is his 17th total. With an exclamation mark. Yes, because, bro, just to put this in perspective, 11, 11 at one tournament is the equivalent of, let's say, a single NBA player winning the defensive player of the year eight years out of 10, you know, or the scoring title nine times in 12 years, something like the, I can't, there's no single good comparison, but to compare it to the NBA, it's like that. Like he's so good on clay that he's basically untouchable. Yeah. And I believe this is his 11th title in 14 years or his 11th since 2004. So yes, 14 years. Well, damn Raphael. And two of those three years he didn't win is because he didn't participate whatsoever. Why? Where was you at, Raphael? <laughs> Raphael? Okay, and lastly, we want to point out, as surprisingly Sebastian was actually keeping up with the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Washington Capitals are actually a team that came out on top in the Stanley Cup Finals. They won in five games. And this is the first time in 20 years that any team from Washington, D.C. has won a championship in their league. And this is the first time in the Capitals franchise history that they've won the Stanley Cup. And I believe their history is 44, 45 years. Listen, I don't know or care about hockey, but it would have been a cooler story if the Golden Knights won the the championship. That would have been really cool. It would have been a cooler story, but it also would have been more controversial. Because the expansion team winning. Yeah, how awesome would that have been? That would have been amazing. But the way I look at it, the with Washington winning, it's like mm-hmm. Peyton Manning winning his first Super Bowl after 10 plus years. It's like LeBron James winning his first finals after 9 or 10 years. Because many people believe he is the best player in the league, or at least he's the best offensive gifted player. We're talking about Ovechkin. But if I'm not mistaken, in hockey, it's not like where the NBA is right now, where the same two teams are getting there every year, every every single year, back to back to back to back. No, it's not. 
Exactly. So I, 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 as awesome as Washington winning, it's not like they've been in the finals every single year for the past five years and then finally won. But can I tell you this? What? They, the reason why they haven't been able to get to the finals is, or get to the Stanley Cup finals is because they've always got eliminated by the Pittsburgh Penguins, which over that same span have won three championships. So they finally got over the nemesis this year. And they started the postseason down 0-2. And they're known for, cl- for choking. So they came back from a 0-2 deficit, won that series, beat them. Against a team that always beat them? No, it just in the first round. Like, they, they normally like get eliminated in the first round. And if they do pass the first round, they get eliminated in the second round. He's never been to the, ch- the conference championships. So, he, so, so they didn't choke in the first round. They defeated their arch rival in the second round. They won the conference championship for the first time in his, his uh, 13 years or something like that. And then they win the championship. That's still a good story. That is. Dude, I was going for, I was going for the Golden Knights because they would have been the first team ever yeah, to do that what they been, did. That's what I'm saying. Like, that that would have been really cool, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but now, guys, we're going to get back into the NBA Finals. Yep. And uh, just to start off, the Warriors, as you guys know, they've won their second trade finals. Third in four years, which, Sebastian, what is that? What does uh, that make them? They're the fourth team to accomplish. Three in four years. Three in four years. And by the way, all the three previous teams won three straight, so that's why they won three in four years, obviously. How do you feel about this? Um, I'm not surprised. I can't say I'm surprised. No, because when you think about it, both teams were the same from last year, except Cavs didn't have a Kyrie. So if they won in five games last year, you would assume they should have swept. And yeah. they did. Um, <laughs> they're very lucky that uh, Chris Paul once again was injured this time. Uh, you know, it's one thing to be injured with the Clippers. You probably weren't going to do shit with the Clippers. But when you're on the, the Houston Rockets and you're, and you're up in the series and you have two chances to close out and your best player, as we've already discussed, that we believe Chris Paul is the best player on that team. Can we? Can we say, though, those two games proved who the best player for Houston is, though, right? Chris Paul is still the best player. No, that's what I'm saying. Oh, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because people were like, in game five, Harden choked up in the fourth quarter, and it was Chris Paul who willed them to that yeah. g- game five victory. Now, I just want to point out that I don't believe that without Harden, Chris Paul could have beaten them. Yes. It's a two-man show. Yeah. We're saying but, he's just more valuable. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, they lucked out there, not 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 to the Warriors' fault, because I mean it's not they their didn't fault. They have Iggy. Yeah, because Iggy is Chris Paul. <sighs> he's Broke. the equivalent for sure. He won a Finals MVP, so he's definitely the, the equivalent of Chris Paul. <laughs> You're right. We're not, not going right. to get into this, bro. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay, uh, LeBron James for the series. He averaged 34 points, nine rebounds, and 10 assists. Keep in mind. Games two, three, and four. It later came out after the series was over that LeBron James was in fact playing with a broken hand. Fractured. He was injured on his shooting hand. We also want to point out that it was LeBron James who is at fault for his own fractured hand. So you can't blame an injury when it's your fault for causing the injury. Still amazing what he did. Regardless. Uh, but um, let's look at these other stats. Kevin Durant, snake, put up 29 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists, inflated stats because uh, uh, Francis brought it up a little bit. Steph Curry. Okay, if we want to be exact, <laughs> it was what, 10.7 rebounds and 7.5 and assists? Yes. Okay. Happy. Okay, Steph Curry, 28 points, 6 rebounds, 7 assists. Uh, I still think Steph Curry should have been the finals MVP. Can we take us go down this road for a little bit? I do want to talk about this. Hmm. Why do you think that? Because I agree with you. Because Steph Curry is the glue to that team. Steph, if listen, the Warriors with this current team win the finals without KD. Without Steph Curry, I don't think they can win. It well, definitely been... not in four. They, they, I think they could still win the series, but not in four. Can you make the case? KD is Golden State's James Harden in that sense, and Curry is the Chris Paul. Yeah. Where where KD is obviously more talented, he is more gifted, but at the end of the day, the team runs around 
Curry. Steph Curry. Yeah. Well, look at look at look how th- throughout the regular season when Steph Curry missed games versus when Durant missed games. Yo, not even that, bro. Look at Steph Curry's two best games this se- this series. Games two and four. That those are the blowouts. Mm-hmm. Those, and I know they're gonna say game one, KD struggled and they almost lost that game. But KD was dominant and. He was dominant in game three, too. Listen, LeBron James put up 51 points. Uh, the Warriors almost blowing that game has nothing to do with the Warriors playing bad. Yeah. That was a... If anything, the only reason that... They won. They won is because the Cavs beat themselves at the end of, regula- at the, at the end of regulation time. Mm-hmm. Which we're going to get into that, but let's still c- c- stick to... I, I just want to point out, games two and four were the blow victories for the Warriors, and those are the two games where Curry stepped up. Yep. And look at game three where K- where KD had 40-plus points, had a very historic night, and they barely won. So just to put that in perspective. Yeah, Curry, <laughs> game three, 11 points, uh, one of 10 on threes, and only three of 16 field goals, and they still won the game. But but we should point out that was a, a single digit win. Where unlike games yeah, that two, was only an eight point win. Yeah. yeah, which I guess doesn't help the fact that we're saying that with, with without uh, Curry they can't win. But no, like I said, I don't think they don't win no. the series. I just don't think they win in four. No, but it does when you think about it. The two games Curry balled out, they they blow out the Cavs. The the one the one game he is terrible, and the two games he doesn't have his two best performances are the single digit games. Yeah, and also. Also, we should point out that he was one of ten from three, and the one he hit was a crucial three pointer in the that, fourth. That, in the fourth, the down the stretch, that then Kevin Durant came back and hit a three and put the game away. Yes, because the game could have gone either because way. Because at, at that, that point. point, it was going back and forth. It was going back and forth, and like we said, uh, Steph Curry at that point was zero for nine on threes, he, he and only going, two of six, two of fifteen. So that one three, mind you, was the only three he hit. Which was a key three, though. Was and a huge yes. three. And that continued his streak of three-pointers, too, because yep. he was like 40-something straight now. So, okay. Yep. Okay, so uh, so we just wanted to point that out. LeBron James, for the, what, fourth straight year, has a ridiculous stat line for the finals. And these stats would probably be even more ridiculous if it wasn't for the hand. Is this uh, average? What? No, no, that was for the game. That was a triple double that okay. we're going to get into because it's important. That was his tenth. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're going to move into the notable games, and we're going to discuss uh, game one, which was the game that made the Warriors and broke the Cavaliers. Yeah, this series goes. I believe it goes differently, and I don't mean like Cavs win the series, but I mean like the the outcome of the series. Might not have finished in four games if obviously LeBron. it would have been a six game series if if they won game. Yeah, one. I still think Warriors win, but I think it goes six yeah. games. So LeBron James puts up fifty one points, and nobody else does anything. Yeah, and uh, just uh, real quick, because uh, for this game, pe- two people go into two groups. They blame the officiating for why the Cavs lose, or which they bl- was there were some definite questionably blown calls. Okay, but then there's people who just straight up says. You, j- at the end of the day, you have to go with what the officiating is giving you, and you still have to pull out the victory. And they blame the Cavs for not having the 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 awareness and having their minds in it when they needed it to be. So when I think of Game One and that loss, I think of many different factors. It wasn't there was I believe there was not one single thing that lost the game for them. Okay. So you go back to many blown calls. There was two specific ones where uh, the ball was swiped from Kevin Love. I mean, from Kevin Durant, that they called fouls, which weren't fouls at all. They were clean strips. I know one you're talking about. Yeah. One was uh, by uh, by uh, Hood. George George Hill, and then one was by Hood. Or no, one was LeBron, and then one one was Hill. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those were huge because they put Kevin Durant on the line. And yes. So that's four points right there. And I know I remember two specific that he he it was down the stretch and they needed those two points. Yeah, and then there was the 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 August. block that, that that was uh it was a the, charge it was charge a, that was changed into a blocking foul. No, it was a it wasn't it was a blocking foul that was turned. 
No, they originally said it was a. They, they originally, oh yeah, KD was on the offense, so it yeah, was so a charge that they and, changed into a blocking yeah. foul, which I think was huge because I think uh, either the Warriors were down two or they were tied at that at that moment. They were down. They were because those yeah, they were, were down the, two, and then they tied because that sent, since they were over the bonus, Katie. Durant went to the line. Yes, yep, puts them up two. Which can I say this? If you watch the call. I believe at the end of the day, the refs made the correct call. The problem is that's never happened where they changed it in the at the end of the game. That's think, where people have a problem with it. I think because it was – whether you think it was the right call or the wrong call, it was such a close call because – Judgment call. Because whatever one you decide you see it as, you can't say it's clearly that one. Right, yeah. like it's there's a very there's very little room for error in that call. So regard th- disregarding what you think the outcome is is too close of a call to make on too big of a game with too much at stake to be reversed. Yes, mind you, you're calling that you're reversing that call on the best player in the NBA. That that that, that should not have happened. With that being said, the Cavs still had two clear opportunities to win the game, and that's when yep. George so, okay, Hill. Okay, so the, the the now we cover the refereeing being one of the factors. Yes. Second fact, that George Hill misses one of the two free throws. Yes. That's part of the problem, but it's not that big of a problem. Players miss clutch free yes. throws all the time. But if he made it, they win the game. Yep. Well, maybe because then they would have had the lead. Yeah, but uh, the Warriors would have had a timeout with four seconds left. That's plenty of time. You could make a game winner, but let's just assume that that that's one of the reasons they didn't win. So okay. now your coach, your your coach Ty Lue, and you have to be in the game and realize that if you have you, a timeout. You, you made the first one, and there's a possibility of you could miss the second one. Yeah. You have to know how much time is on the clock. You got to know that there's a timeout left, and think that if you miss it, you might get a rebound. And if you get said rebound. You need to be able to call a timeout. You need to have that presence of mind to know what's going on in the game. You also have to have LeBron James has to know they have a timeout too. Yeah. But like I was telling you earlier, LeBron James has been expected to carry this team in every uh, statistical category. He's the reason they they are where they even are. I I think LeBron James has done enough. Would it have helped if LeBron knew? But this is but this is like when you want the title for greatest player of your generation, the greatest player of all time. In a situation like that, you need to know because he was looking at Jr. F- for the entire time Jr. was coming out. At any point, he could have called he a timeout. Called time out. No, like I said, I don't. I don't place blame on anyone specifically. But if, if I'm gonna get, have one. Uh, person to blame. One person or one uh, instance or situation, uh, situation, circumstance that has the biggest, like at fault percentage. Yeah. And I'm thinking Ty Lu, because as a coach, LeBron James put up 51 points. What got, about J.R. Smith, bro? No, like I said, J- J- I don't expect much from J.R. Smith. <laughs> as many people are saying, he's not the intellectual. Yeah. And LeBron put up 51 points in a historic showing. He goddamn almost had a triple-double, if not an actual triple-double. I'm not sure. I don't think it was quite a triple-double. He must have been like a rebound away. Yeah. No, I believe that was the game he was 51 and 10 and 9 or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Like 11 and 9. Yeah, yeah. So I think for LeBron James to have that mental lapse to not call a timeout, I can excuse that because you put up 51 points. But you can't excuse... Bro, unless at the end of the day, J.R. Smith needs to know. We're talking about awareness and, and knowing what state you're in. How do you not know you're tied? Yeah. So so I guess in order of fault, it goes, I'm blaming the refs. No, 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 not the refs. I'm calling J.R. Smith the One. third the third least fault. Really? Because I don't have expectations of J.R. Smith. Bro, that's just not an ex- You're playing in the NBA in the NBA Finals, bro. But that's also why I'm giving the refs number two. Because it wasn't one missed call. It was three huge But, bro, missed, missed calls. calls happen in every single game. But those are huge. Bro, refs are dead last for me, dude. You can't fault officiating when your players have a clear chance to win. Hill could have won the game. Okay, that I don't put any blame on him. None. Not enough to say they lost them that game because 
Bro, you bro, know what that's LeBron like saying? James that's, you, know what that, you know what that's... But LeBron James has been missing free throws throughout the entire playoffs. But, bro, you missed that free throw. You still tied the game. I think splitting the pair was good enough. You did your job to put you in a position to win. After that, you miss. Your team needs to have the awareness to know. So I guess, okay, fine. You can interchange the, the, the ref and the free and J.R. Smith's. Not the free throw. And J.R. Smith's blunder, but not by much, in my opinion. Okay. And like I said, I don't have high expectations of J.R. Smith, so him missing, him not knowing what the fuck the score was, I'm not even surprised. Honestly, I'm probably expecting that shit. But number one, I think Ty Lue, not knowing that you have a timeout left and not. I mean, I. I no, I, Ty I've Lue said so knew. Many times. He just didn't, he didn't use it. Because he didn't know worse. What, but it's, you think that's worse than LeBron James not knowing? You don't know. You're the team fucking leader, bro. Bro, but in a situation like that, like I said, you're the team leader, but it's not like he had like a 30-point game and seven rebounds. He had 51. That was a historic game. You've done everything in your power. And those three officiating calls, blown calls, can really like fuck up your mojo, bro. You put up 51 points, you're thinking, oh my God, I'm going to win this on the road. And those three questionable calls have you having J- uh, George Hill decide the game for you. You know what this sounds like? It sounds like LeBron wants these excuses. I don't think so. Bro, like like at the end of at the end of game four, he came out with his with with the thing for his hand. Why did you do that? That's just because it. because the only reason he didn't have it on at first is because he didn't want the uh, yeah the Warriors. So so you shouldn't come out at the end of game four. That should not be excuse. Nobody should have ever known. If they didn't know in games two, three, and four, they should never know. I agree to a, to a certain bullshit. degree. Yeah, I agree to, su- to 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 a certain degree. And then and then he gave that speech saying, "Oh, I don't want to use this as an excuse. I just want people to know." Blah blah blah. No, that's the exact reason why you're letting people know. So so you could put it in people's minds subconsciously. Oh, that is an excuse why LeBron wasn't going. Off, off. Okay, but I'll say this. Whether or not LeBron James has a broken hand. Fractured. Fractured hand. <laughs> the Cleveland Cavaliers don't win that series. So I don't think it's it's so much as an excuse for why they lost the series, but maybe an excuse to why, why he... why they get swept? Yeah. Or why LeBron... Or why they didn't get swept with LeBron averaging 40 instead of 35. 34. Yeah. So I, I get it. I agree. Okay. Partially. Okay. Yeah. I'll take that from you. Yeah. That's, that's rare. <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay. Take it back. <laughs> okay. So real quick, put in your rankings. Who do you blame for, for, for the collapse at the end of Game Four? And I want a top five, including LeBron James. Game Four? No, Game One. Oh, Game One. Yeah. If okay, I say Game top Four, five? apologies. Yeah. So from fifth to first. Of what's the blame? Yeah, I'll go first while you think. I'm putting refs, fifth, Hill, fourth, Ty Lu third, Le- LeBron James second, and J.R. Smith first. And I know why you're not going to put J.R. Smith first, but at the end of the day, all he has to do is put it up. And that, like, like even if I have the lead, I'm still putting it up. Because if you put it up, that's still wasting time. That's, that's another two seconds. But uh, he could have gone like pump fake and try to draw a foul. Very least, e- very least. Either way, there's no reason to pull it out. There is no reason. Oh no, absolutely. My thing, if uh, like I said, I don't not blame J.R. Smith. I just don't blame him as much. But very easily, he could have grabbed the rebound, called timeout, and still have like three point five seconds left. Yeah, it's plenty. He, of he could have done anything but that, you know. But th- so with that being said, everybody, it's like nobody called a timeout, and everybody should have known. But if your players aren't aware, I just your blame coach, me. who isn't tired of running up and down a court, putting up 51 <laughs> points, should have the clear mind to be like, okay, he made the first, might miss the second. If we get a rebound, I'm calling a timeout. Can we say this, though? Just like you don't expect much from JR, I don't think Ty Lu is a great coach. I don't think he's a good coach. I don't even think he's oh, an he's average coach. he's a terrible coach. coach. No, so why are we expecting coach. that from him? Because you didn't run up and down a court for 48 minutes. JR wasn't if you look at his stat line from that game, he only played twenty six minutes to start with. But he 
Okay. <laughs> but the point is, you're in the moment. You're inside the actual, like, you're in the game. Yeah. You grab the ball. People are chasing you. You're trying not to, you know, travel. You're trying not to pass to the wrong person. You're trying not to sh- take the wrong shot. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on in that moment, whereas Ty Lue is just sitting there like... <sighs> Okay, I think we've talked about this for for quite some time. Let's get to game two because this was obviously the the meltdown. Yeah. So Curry hit nine threes, which is an NBA Finals record. Yeah, he he th- went off. This is where he posted thirty three points. He shot better from beyond the arc than from the field. So yeah. Uh, uh, yeah th- there's not- there's like er- all the Warriors were efficient. Iggy still wasn't back, and they still won by a b- they still won by double digits. Yeah. It just. That was the game two, in my mind was, I I had the feeling this was gonna be a sweep, because they gave once up. they won game two, because the way they lost game two, because there's a, there's two ways they were gonna come out. They were either gonna come out with a fire and say the rest of the series is going to be tough, or they were going they were gonna like they were just gonna fall flat, bro, and they fell flat. And I know game three was close. Yeah, I guess you're right, because if game two is as close as game one, we have our series in our hands. I think if game two was as close as game one, they win game three, and bare minimum, it goes five games. Bare minimum. I think, honestly, if if game two would have been as close as game one, Cavs win both home games. Because if you can get that close on the road with that supporting cast against that team... I'm not going to guarantee that, because they... No, no, I wouldn't guarantee it either. It would have been more likely. It would have been more likely that it, that, that that we'd have a a two two series yeah. after yeah. going to Cleveland. Yeah. So then game three, KD finally wakes up, puts up forty three points, six of nine on threes, twelve of I mean fifteen of twenty three in field goals, very efficient. He's the fourth player to ever put up to ever put up forty, 40 10, ten and five. five. Joining Shaquille O'Neal, Michael Jordan, and then LeBron James, obviously. Yep. And then for a complete flip flop of what Curry did in game two. two. The man put up a whopping 11 points which, on an astounding one of 10 threes. Which, by the way, game three was just... Game three, I knew game four was going to be a blowout. Because Curry had the second most points for the Warriors at 11. And they still won, bro. Let that, let that sink in. He scored the second most points. Was that really the second most? Yes, bro. All five starters, McGee, uh, Draymond Green, and Klay Thompson scored 10 points, but they only scored 10 points, and nobody on the bench scored more than 10. He scored the second most, and it was 11. And the, Wow. You, when does that happen, bro? Now, like we said earlier, they only won by eight. Yeah, no, but that's, I know, but it still comes down to the point. It's just like the Cavaliers, if you can't win when only one player on the Warriors scores more than 11 points, that's a problem. No, which goes to show how important one player having a crazy night is. Can, is because LeBron had 51 in game one, and, and by himself, he almost beat them. But they lost, which made it deflating. Yeah, and then KD put up 43 uh, with nobody else average. Uh, if Curry doesn't hit that one single three that changes, that might have changed the outcome of the game to why they win, KD would have had a 43-point game, or maybe 40, because maybe he doesn't hit that three after. Yeah. In a losing effort. Yeah. Uh, I do want to point this out, though. That three by KD was beyond clutch. It was with, like, 50 seconds left. It was 32 feet away. It was it was basically at the same time in the same area as Game 3 from last year. It was around the same area in terms of placement, but, but, it was but deeper. further back. Yeah. No, it, it was... Like, a, three feet back. No, yeah, it was... Bro, it, it might have been four or five. It was very... Far. It looked like a curry shot, bro. You yeah. know how curry normally takes those type of shots. Yeah. That's what it looked like, yeah. most definitely. Well, that was that was a a uh, I that was the game that, that was a dagger. No, that that gutted the entire team. Yeah, there was that was one, a game dagger and series dagger. N- yes, exactly. Because it, like I said, if Cavs win that game, they they still have a chance to to tie the series, mm-hmm. or at least go down three one. And you know LeBron's been down three one before. And you know LeBron knows. With the type of cerebral player he is, that the Cavs held all of their players to 11 points and under besides Kevin Durant, and they still lose 
Yeah. There is no way Curry is going to have an off night again. And he didn't. And, and at that point, no one's ever come back from 3-0. And I've told many people that I think LeBron James can be the first player to come back from 3-0. But not with that but team. But not with this team and not against that team. And I think he knew that himself. So he's probably like, fuck it. If we couldn't, if we hold in KD to only 40 points, 43, and everybody else average uh, point eight, putting up less than 10 except uh, the team Curry. averaged like 10 points. Yeah. Yeah. And you still lose at home? And, bro, Kevin Love was good this series. He was averaging around 20 and 10. Yeah. He was looking like old Kevin Love. I hate when people say that LeBron's best uh, player is uh, J.R. Smith. Who says that? Yo, I've heard it so many times this week. J.R. Smith? That J.R. Smith is your second best player, or Rodney Hood or George Hill. I'm like, if you say anybody other than Kevin Love, you don't know basketball. That's ignorance. Isn't it, though? I was like, uh, every time people tell me that, bro, I was like, Canada? are we just going to pretend that, uh, no, everywhere, bro. I'm like, are you just going to, pre- like, I've seen it on Twitter and everything. So I'm like, so we're just going to pretend like Kevin Love wasn't on the team? Are you? You know what it is? I think people take Kevin Love for granted. Just like how they took Chris Boss for granted. Yeah. No, you're right. That is so disrespectful, bro. Lonzo drops a Kuzma diss track. I love their chemistry. Bro, bro. There's, those two are so funny together. <laughs> bro, they go at it all the time from their clothing <laughs> yeah. to, to what they say. Especially Kuzma. Did you see he won the Troll Award for the NBA? No. Whatever. It's some, some, some funny award show. And he won. Uh, but it, just to put into perspective how it was just a, a parody. Okay. Westbrook won the award for nicest NBA player to the media. And they, they, they had one of his interviews and overdubbed it where he was saying, I love the media. You know how he's always like like so rude to the Yeah, to, uh, yeah. to the reporters. Like, I'm not answering that stupid question. What? No, but it was like, No, I love the media. In fact, if I wasn't a basketball player, I would have probably become a reporter. So he won that award. Joel Embiid won Troll of the Year. Dude, and, uh, I respect and Kuzma him. won Roaster of the Year. I just I just dislike him, bro. Same, bro. I mean, well, mine is more like backwards. I like him. I just don't respect him. Why don't you respect him? Because he's such a fucking troll. I respect that about him. That's part of the game, bro. Like, I love uh, Lance Stevenson for that, bro. I love that. He's the only player I know that could get under LeBron James' skin. And it's awesome. I like Joel Embiid. <laughs> Just, okay, okay uh, you left out one key thing about uh, Game 3. It's just uh, LeBron, LeBron James put up a triple-double. Triple-double. Tenth uh, finals triple-double, which is a record. Yeah, I believe he passed Magic Irving Johnson. So, Listen, when it's all said and done, LeBron James will probably hold, He's gonna hold pretty it. much almost all of the uh, categories. Well, you know he's only like 200 points behind Jerry West now for most points Combined for uh, finals. Okay, so next year in the finals, he'll put it up in the first two games. <laughs> <laughs> if he gets to the finals, depending on the team he goes to. Which is what we're going to tackle next. Yes, this is completely off the script. I don't know where it's going. Should probably not do that. <laughs> it's good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. So, uh... I'm wearing my Miami Heat jersey in honor of where LeBron James will play next. You're wild. You are bugging, bro. All right, so just uh, he, he's going just, to, just so you guys and for for the for the non uh, super followers of the NBA, Vegas released their uh, their title odds of for next year, and a Yo, lot of the teams Cleveland's on there like are fifty to one. That's what it? I'm saying. So that's what I was gonna say. So the t- the the first two are expected to be there because they're just that good. It's, uh, the, it's the Warriors and then the Rockets next. Yes, and then the other teams will very su- will really much surprise you. Not Boston though. No, nah. but it has a lot to do. with... With the free agency of the king. Which affected 2K's cover. Yep. If you notice that. Yeah. So then uh, LeBron James. Uh, no. So the, 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 the third best odds, unless it has been updated, was the Philadelphia 76ers. Of course, because they, they're a possible landing spot for LeBron James. And they're just talented with without him even though but I if s- you but, but if you don't factor in LeBron James's free agency, then I think the Third's- Cavs are, are easy third. Yeah, but I would still put Philly in top five. Yeah, but not before Cleveland with LeBron being in Cleveland. Or or before Boston. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so the, the uh, like I said, after the first two predictions, the next couple are all uh, 
with the assumption that LeBron James will play for said team. So number three, uh, the 76 is at their best odds. Number fourth is uh, the Boston Celtics. Partly Which, because they're very good, and partly and because they, they also a poss- possible landing spot for LeBron James. Which is not... I, I don't see it either. It doesn't make sense. Kyrie will want another trade. Kyrie left for that reason. He will want to go. But and, as someone pointed out, I don't think the Boston Celtics have any problem in trading Kyrie if it means getting LeBron. Okay. But this is the thing. There is no way Brad Stevens is going to allow LeBron James... To run his team, it's not going to happen. Le- Brad but Stevens. Remember, is we, a- we've discussed about imagine LeBron had a had a coach like Brad Stevens. Brad Stevens would have called that timeout. <laughs> I'm just saying, I would have called that timeout. He would have. But my my argument against that is, as we also brought up, what if he's the type of player who doesn't like? He's just not coach friendly. Like when it comes to the great coaches, like what if he's not willing? LeBron? Yeah. Because, yo, bro, Brad Stevens is a systematic coach. And wherever LeBron James goes, it's his type of play. Not in Miami, which I think is why he left. You don't think it, he's he was very ball dominant though, bro? In oh the final no! Two I, but, years, but, but what I'm saying is he didn't run like when there was a look at the difference between a, a, a timeout situation now with Cleveland where LeBron is doing the talking versus where he was in Miami. But I, I Spolstra is doing the talking. But that was only because of the the. Who, who's the guy up up ahead? Who's like above Spolstra? I can't think of his name. Who's oh coach? Pat Riley? Yeah, Pat Riley. That, because Pat Riley was like, "Yo, LeBron James, that shit ain't flying." But that's what I'm saying because it's an organ it's an organizational thing. It's it's structure within the the, the system. It's not you 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 might be the best player on the team in the world, but. It goes so much more beyond that because you have your coach who you still must listen to. And if you want to, w- want to get even higher than that, you got Pat Riley who doesn't, like you said, that shit will not fly with him. Yeah. But. And I think that I, that I, system I, is, it, it works for LeBron James. He needs it to be in a place where he, yes, he has that freedom to be the best player and dominate the ball or whatever, but you still trust in your in your organization to make the right calls without you having to worry about that but i've read a lot of articles that brad steven he expects hustle on every single play that's why boston is such a good defensive team of course that shit where lebron james is bitching out on guarding the top star or isn't playing defense for a quarter that's not gonna fly but the thing is lebron james is not doing that if he hasn't been in supporting cast well, he doesn't need to do all that if he has a better supporting cast, which we talked about. So, anyways, the number fifth team tied for fifth best title odds, and why I s- it's not a dumbfounded idea that he lands in Miami is because the fifth best chance to win the title next year are split between two teams. What's the first team? The Lakers and the Heat. Which, when you think about it, that was just set up perfectly for us discussing yeah. this. Yeah. So now, listen, like we were talking about earlier, unless he's joining a super team, which I think he shouldn't do for many reasons. That, because that would ruin his legacy. Or it would ruin his legacy. It would ruin the NBA. You got to spread out the talent. The, if he, the, 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 the only uh, contender he, the, that's a real contender that he can join other than the Warriors would be the Rockets. The Rockets are already a contender. Him going to the Rockets is, is worse than KD going to the Warriors because... The Rockets were in a similar situation as OKC was. And because LeBron James is better than KD. Yeah. and But this is the thing. I know we were wrong about saying how Chris Paul and, and James Harden wouldn't work together mm-hmm. because of how ball dominant they are. I do not see three ball dominant players on Case one. Case point, OKC. Yeah. yeah. You're talking about OKC with James Harden when he was the sixth man, right? No, with uh, or, Paul George, Westbrook, and oh, and 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 Carmelo. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So um, also, <laughs> we're in the East Coast, so ain't nobody trying to stay up till ten thirty to watch the beginning of greatness. I'm trying to witness greatness at a reasonable bedtime. <laughs> oh, that's why you want. To, okay, I got bro. You. If he goes to the if he goes to the West, not only does that they won't even play his games, bro. That's or what like, they won't play them as often. That's what I'm saying. So one, you've ruined the your legacy. Two, you've ruined 
the league. The, the league. Even and worse. And three. It pisses you off. It pisses me off because I can't watch it. Also, what's the point of having an Eastern Conference at that point? Bro, it doesn't matter. I was telling somebody, it doesn't matter. If, if he goes to, to, to the Rockets. They will have to change the playoff formation. Boston can come out with both of their play, uh, uh, stars fully healthy, and they could add DeMarcus Cousins, and they will not stand a chance against either the Warriors or the LeBron James super team of Chris Paul and James Harden. It, it, it's not happening. Nobody has, at least if LeBron's in the East, you can say that he stays in Cleveland or goes to Miami or joins Brooklyn. Whoever the fuck he plays for is going to the finals against the, the Western teams. But if, if he goes to the West, then there's, there's no point of having an Eastern Conference. But you know what they were saying this entire year? The two best teams are in the same conference. It's Houston and the Warriors. Yeah. If he goes to either one of those two teams, that just further proves. But that's what I'm saying. That's why he shouldn't go West. Stay East and make the league somewhat competitive. Because at I least want him to if go he to joins the right Eastern team, you have a chance to dethrone the West. Yeah, but I'm... I'm starting to think LeBron James is thinking the whole finals record is getting in his head and he would rather go through the Warriors before the finals and have an easy finals. That's what we were talking about earlier. Where we yeah. really disagreed where I think it's better to lose in the finals against the best competition you've ever faced. I'm not saying what looks better. I'm saying what is LeBron James thinking? Well, I hope he's thinking with the right head. But is anybody really arguing your point, bro? Not really. Surprisingly, Even. on social media, yeah. Okay, Bro, that's social. the main thing. That's the main thing people bring up the, the finals record. I'm like, but the man's been in the finals every year for the last nine years. Bro, ES- eight years. ESPN had this good uh, mini thing where there's two teams of debaters saying who's better, Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Michael Jordan came out on top. Yeah. No, and that's a popular opinion. And you disagree with that opinion? I disagree. I'm not saying LeBron James isn't the more talented player. He's just not the better player, bro. That doesn't make sense. It does make sense. No, you can't say he's the more talented player and then say he's not the best player. He's physically the more talented player. but Statistically, he's also the better player. But he's played in a weaker... Bro, no, that does not count. The 90s basketball and today's basketball does not count. If you're talking about the, the, the weaker conference, then, 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 then uh, Michael Jordan's finals record uh, shouldn't be compared to LeBron James' final record. How? Because LeBron James is playing the tougher conference. No, he hasn't. Yeah, you argued against yourself but when you say that. He, he's played against or in this tougher conference? Against the tougher conference. Bro, so you're disrespecting if, the if Utah we, Jazz. So if the playoff, if, if, if postseason excluding finals matters less than finals, because that's the argument for Michael Jordan being better, the finals record. Yeah. If that's such a big argument, then LeBron but, James is still the better player. Because no, he's not. He's, pl- he's playing against the tougher teams every time. Oh, so so the bad boy Detroit Pistons, the Boston Celtics. The aging bad boy Pistons. When he not finally that, beat them. Bro, not... he. The aging Boston Celtics, I'll give you that. Not the aging bad boy Pistons. The point is LeBron James faces tougher competition in the finals where you where Michael oh, Jackson so has a better record. Michael, Michael Jackson, Jordan. Michael Jordan. Oh, okay. So 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 LeBron James once every year goes up against one tough team. MJ would go up against at least two tough teams just to get to the finals and would still play a really good, if not great, team in the finals. Listen, the reason why it's so hard to compare LeBron James to to Michael Jordan is for that same reason. Because if you look at uh, individual either finals or or, or pre-finals records, then you start getting into into, into a lot of context, right? Whereas if 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 you're going to downplay Michael Jordan's greatness uh, from the finals because he had a weaker competition, then you got to point out that he had tougher competition uh in the playoffs right you're saying he played lesser competition in the finals but he had to go through harder teams to get there yeah whereas lebron james is the opposite you're yeah. playing through easier competition to get there but you're playing the hardest teams ever assembled in the big in the big stage but that's why you can't keep saying oh he's been to eight straight finals would he have been to eight straight finals if he was in the west but this is my point about why why it's not a, a comparable stat because if you if I can't say him getting to the finals is an accomplishment because he plays in an easy conference, then Michael Jordan's rec- finals records can't be uh, uh, brought into conversation either or a discussion because okay. he's he, he's he's played weaker competition in the finals. Okay, so but you could say this: Michael Jordan getting to the finals in those six years, three straight times, is much more impressive than LeBron James getting to the finals eight straight years. 
Get into the finals, yes. Okay. But the overall result is not more impressive because of that same reason. I, I, would, I would disagree just for a simple fact. If you look at the records of the teams he went up against, it is so lopsided compared to LeBron James. And most of the teams LeBron James had great records, it's in the finals, and that's all. Bro, have you seen the players that LeBron James is at to go up against? Yeah, like who? Paul George, Westbrook, Durant, Harden, Curry, Aldridge, uh, Most of those Kawhi players Leonard. in the West? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He has the tough uh, co- uh, competition in the finals every time. LeBron James has always had super teams according to people, right? So LeBron James super teams, I think, would still be able to beat the teams that Michael Jordan beat. If not every time, he would definitely be able to beat them some of the times. Agreed, right? Yeah. Meaning, if LeBron James is able to get through those teams... But like you said, you already fucked up your argument. Because the only way the argument stands is LeBron James would have had to win all six times. And if he loses just once, that proves him or his teams were not as good as the MJ teams. No, what I'm saying is they had tougher competitions in different areas of, 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 of getting there. In a different point of the path. Michael Jordan faced a tougher competition getting to the finals. But once he got over that hump, it was pretty much... He was the favorite to win every single time. Because Whereas LeBron James has been to the finals nine times and has only been the favorite twice. And out of those two times, he only dropped the ball one year in 2011. Yeah. Every year that he's supposed to win, he wins. Besides the one year. Besides the one year. And he's only been predicted, what, two or three? Two. Out of nine times. Which is what I'm saying. He's been the underdog every single time, except for two times, and obviously 2011, but he's won every other championship that he's supposed to win, and has gotten, I think, pretty damn close, considering the He got very guy. lucky with that one, though. Which one? The one that won Game 7 with the Spurs. <laughs> Are we going to discuss this right now? Let's I'm go. Just, I'm just because saying. people say that LeBron wouldn't have another ring if, uh, if Ray Allen doesn't hit that shot, right? He also wouldn't have another ring if Draymond Green was Let's just wasn't go back suspended. to let's go back to <laughs> we're going to tackle every single one of those. So uh, just so you know, it's at the fifty minute mark. That's okay. I'll take two minutes. LeBron James put up what like thirty something points that game. If LeBron James doesn't have that game, Ray Allen doesn't doesn't is, doesn't it's not in a situation where that three even ties a game. Yeah, and if LeBron James is as clutch as many people think he is, he would have made at least one of the two three pointers he missed. He put up thirty something in an elimination game. Okay. He put him, he put the team in a position to win whereas he if he didn't hit that shot, he someone else had the opportunity to do it. That's through no fault LeBron James's fault. I've told you many times LeBron James did what he was supposed to do and Not Ray really, Allen, bro. He missed the and two Ray, final three Ray Allen being the 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 most proficient uh three-point shooter the league has ever seen until KD breaks all the uh, until uh, Curry Curry breaks all the records, hit the shot that Ray Allen is supposed to hit. You know, LeBron James is supposed to put up 30-something points in an elimination game, and Ray Allen is supposed to hit a if clutch three. If we're going three. by supposed to's, then the Spurs were supposed to get one of those offensive rebounds, and they would have won the game. If well, we're going if by we're supposed, to's. supposed to's, LeBron James should have uh, swept the, that Spurs team because they had a super team. But then that's when we get into the argument. Exactly. So if we're just talking about what's at hand, LeBron James did what he did to put him in a position to win, and Ray Allen hit the shot that he's supposed to hit. He practices that specific shot. Did you know that? I know that, but that was still a clutch shot, bro. It it was a very clutch shot. Okay, but I'm telling you, Ray Allen misses that more times than he makes it, in my opinion. That specific shot. So now, Draymond Green, Draymond Green, uh, he says that the only reason the Cavaliers... Uh, I, didn't, I didn't say the only reason. I'm saying the biggest reason why they did not win you, in five. You said that if... if, if uh, I said if Draymond Green is not suspended... They, they win, win that series. In five. In five. But if... We, if we, but, if then, that, but if that's the case, then why didn't they win game seven at home? He played. Then, then that's me using other excuses. Nah, you heard it here first. Bro, have you? Did you watch the final two games? I Bar- watched every there's, single game, bro. There's a reason why they got Kevin Durant, bro. Barnes was trash. <laughs> Barnes was fuck, bro. The final two games, he was like two for sixteen from beyond. He the had arc. terrible series that series. Terrible games that including the final two, bro. He just makes one or two shots. They win game seven. Or if Kyrie isn't the fucking deadly assassin he is, 
They the Cavs lose, but there's too many what ifs there. The point is they didn't lose that series no, because Draymond Green okay, got bro, suspended. This is my they, point. That, that might have been why they lost Game Six. I mean, the, Game Five. The NBA should have never interfered, but they did that on purpose because they wanted to extend the series, bro. And if someone, I can give you, I can, bro, you know what? I LeBron can concede James to that and put say his sweaty nuts on his head. I can concede to that and say that they, the, the NBA is at fault that the that the series uh, got extended. But it is not Draymond not being in there for for one game why they yes. lost the series. Bro, he was there is. for Game Seven at home. There is zero excuse. As you said, the momentum, bro. The momentum. You had momentum at home. It was a close game. If LeBron James doesn't get that block, then Kyrie doesn't get that three. Bro, at okay, if we're if we want to get to facts, by game seven, Curry is still playing with an injured knee. Just I'm just saying, you want to get into game seven. Curry's playing with an injured knee. Iggy's playing injured. They don't have Bogut. And LeBron James. Now has- it's Bogut. <laughs> Bro, he was injured. Do not tell me Bogut was not a, a, a good defender because this is when the Cavs had tall players. I'm not saying he's not players. a good defender. I'm, not say, I'm just saying you cannot throw him in any reason to why they... they, they, they. Bro, I'm Unless saying... Unless he's the only person playing on that team and he missed an open layup to win the game on a buzzer beater, Bogut is not, he should not even Bro, be brought into we're discussion. using cause and effect, right? I'm saying if Warriors have... Draymond Green in Game 5, they win in 5. But you're saying they didn't. So what about Game 7? And I'm giving you reasons why they lost Game 7. I'll tell you what. If uh, if KD and Westbrook don't choke in the conference finals, then the Warriors don't even go to, to, to the finals, and then LeBron sweeps. If Sam Presti wasn't a fucking dumbass general manager, they would have kept James Harden, and the OKC would be the dominant team in the West right now. But would, I, I, we're going by what if James Harden doesn't become the player he is as a six man. He becomes the best six man the NBA has ever seen, and I think he's a better six man than a starter, in my opinion. I don't know, man. He doesn't play it defense. Doesn't, there's some confidence that to, to be in the best player on your team, but he's not. We we've are well. He's well, the best. Like he's now. not the most important player though. But uh, CP3 didn't join until this year. Meaning last year he was the best player on his team. But bro, he's always been a turnover machine and always had bad defense. Yeah. Okay, so the point is, uh, Draymond Green being suspended does not is not the reason why the Warriors <laughs> choked that game, that series. They. Bro, oh. Okay, answer this fucking question. How if, about just give the Cavs some credit for coming back from 3-1? No, I'm not. Yo, bro, answer this question. If Draymond Green plays game five, who wins game five? I don't know. I don't know. Because he played game seven and, and it didn't, and it didn't uh, change the outcome. You know why it didn't change the outcome? Because they, sh- they already lost two straight games. The momentum, bro. The Cavs had lost a game, uh, two straight games as well. Because uh, I'm not arguing with you anymore, bro. I'm just saying. I, I'm not saying that the series wouldn't you, have gone. You think have, Draymond is a bad player, so there's no point to argue. I don't this. think he's a bad player. I don't think he's just that great of a player. He's not. He, an, I don't think he should be. An, uh, uh, they, they, they talk about him like he's a future Hall of Famer. He's an All Star because he's on a good team. You put that man on a different team, he's not an All. You put him in the East, and he's not an All Star. I completely disagree. Who? Who do you put him over in the East? At center. Bro, this year? Joel Embiid. I, well, they not, don't do that center why, thing anymore. That's not why. They I know. Do, I know. They just go by, by forward or backcourt. Yeah. Still. He still makes. Bro. Okay. First off, we can't even count stats. What he brings to a team in terms of grittiness, and, um, intensity, and toughness. Okay. So put James Johnson as, a, as, a, as, a, as an all-star in the East then. But, bro, it's he is a great player. Because he's on a great team. Mario Chalmers looked like an all-star when he No, with, he never he, did. When he played with Miami, he looked no, like an all-star playing with them. No, he did not. Yes, he did. No, he did not. Bro. He always looked like a bum. His weaknesses just weren't pointed out because his teams were winning. Same thing with Draymond Green. But, bro, his weakness is, oh, he can't shoot a three. Oh, okay, big Oh, Draymond Green can shoot a three? No, he can't. Ah, he, he can hit for 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 a LeBron guy that James size, can consist- hit a three. Yeah, but for, for, for the player that Draymond Green is, I would say for his own uh, set of skills, he can hit a three. He can't hit a three consistently. Consistently enough. Yes, he can hit it consistently enough. No, he can't. You can't. You, you can't compare him to Steph Curry and Durant. But when you compare him to other players, he shoots like thirty percent. Which compare is not him a good to his point. type of players, I think he can hit that. I, I trust him to take a a, a three. But he's like many, seventh on my on my on the Warriors team. Bro, I trust them to shoot a three better than Livingston. Livingston's a guard. 
But Livingston never. He's a terrible three point shooter. But that's what I'm saying. You compared to the right people. KD is seven feet and he hits a three pointer better than ninety five percent of the NBA. But KD is the best scorer in the league. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. You're like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> what are we talking about right now? I don't even know. Okay, predictions. Where is LeBron going? Miami. You on it, bro? If you weren't a Miami fan, if I wasn't a Miami fan, okay, then I say he stays in Cleveland. Bro, I see this. I don't think he's he's going west for many reasons I've 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 told you and on many videos, but I think if he stays in the East, he's either got to stay in Cleveland or go to Miami. One for his legacy, so you keep it between two teams. Two because Miami is not. He goes to Miami is a playoff team right now, and if the and if Miami and if LeBron joins Miami, it's not LeBron and current Miami team. It's LeBron, most of Miami team, and maybe add another great All Star. Not superstar, but all star. Paul George might. That's what I'm saying. They could you you could add Paul George. Chris Paul could leave Houston and go. But Chris Paul said he's not willing to take anything but Max, which I think is stupid. Because you've never won a ring and you and you're trying to compete. You gotta you gotta be humble. And he keeps getting injured. In you the gotta playoffs. be humble. You you you're injured every year when it matters. Which I know injury you can't control, but at the end of the day. But at the same time, you gotta be realistic about what you're yeah. asking for. Yeah. So that's why I think he's going to Miami or staying in. I think number one, I think 90% he stays in Cleveland. So you think he's staying in the East? Yes. Absolutely he's staying in the East, I think. Even though I'm not necessarily a fan of it, I do think for many outside reasons he is going to the Lakers. The Lakers? Yeah. For business reasons outside of the NBA and for family reasons. Because for some reason people love living in L.A. I don't know why, but they do. Okay, of all the teams listed, and we're going to take out the Warriors, the Celtics, and that's it. I think the most realistic options, and that's including if I if, if I concede to him going to the West. Okay. It'll be Rockets, Philly, Miami. There is no way. Lakers. He- Just because I put Miami over the Lakers because they're a playoff team, and they play in the East. I do not. I would bet money. He there is no way he goes to Philly because Ben Simmons would become obsolete. The only way he goes to Philly is if Philly trades Ben Simmons for another All Star. And I don't think that happens. Oh, so he's not going to Philly. I I, I say Philly because they have the money to sign him out right without having to trade anyone. But bro, Ben Simmons they can, becomes, but they don't have to trade anybody. Is my point. But Ben Simmons becomes pointless. He becomes useless. He is LeBron James with no shot. But if you're looking at, at, at LeBron James wanting a chance to win and the 76ers wanting to give themselves a chance to win, I think they'd rather keep Ben Simmons and have him be useless as long as you get to have LeBron James and still develop uh, Ben Simmons because LeBron James, if he can st- continues this trend of doing one and one deals, he could be out next year and you still get to keep Ben Simmons. I think that would be detri- detrimental to... Ben Simmons. Absolutely. They're the same player, but he's the poor man's version of him. Yeah. Okay, so that settles it. Miami. Yo, even LeBron. LeBron to Miami. <laughs> Lakers. All right. Uh, we don't have anything else to say. We, I, tell us how you felt about the passionate debate. I, I apologize about raising my voice. I did move back, so it w- didn't pick up that much on the mic. Okay. We need more debates like that. <laughs> Bro, that's the first time I really let go. Next episode, we're going to talk about something completely unrelated. It ain't going to be about basketball. So, no, ne- so we're going to do it with Rhinos and Aliens then? Yeah. That's going to be the first time in a while since we did the sex machine thing. Yeah. <laughs> going bad. Well, that- since the NBA is over, we're not going to keep covering the same thing over. Unless, you know, LeBron James makes his decision. Well, we do. We will cover that and the ramifications. We do have one more sports from all angles show that has to do with the NBA. It has to do with Brad Stevens. We we do want to discuss that and just say we just we 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 don't have enough words can't describe our love for him. Yeah. And I still think he's underrated or un unappreciated bro oh side news like we predicted oh casey is no longer unemployed i said he no. would have a job before the end of the, before the season starts and, and we were hoping in what conference east and what team is it of pretty detroit pistons hmm yeah two big cool. men two big men bro 
if my if my wish comes true that they have a better record than the than Toronto, I'm just going to love saying fuck Toronto for more than one reason. Bro, Toronto might not even be a top five team this year. Yo, they're depending where LeBron goes. You know, it'd be funny too if it turns out that it wasn't Lowry and and DeRozan who made Casey better. They're but, also apparently looking to trade DeRozan. Good. Yeah. He, he, he's, I'm sick of him, bro. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, like I've been saying, it doesn't matter if you put up 27 points all, all season, if you can't even put up 14 and where it matters. But anyways, that's our show. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. Comment, like, subscribe, or don't, whatever. <laughs> Fuck you. Let us know what we messed up on if we Nothing. did say anything incorrect. And those stats do not count because we rounded up. Uh, yeah. If you want to chat with the group, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, Smoke Signals and uh, Morse Code. Also, comment if you like this hat and this bandana and this microphone. I think it's pretty... Comment if you if you just want to punch him right now, because I, I, I definitely do. It's great. Look at this. He's so stylish. It's a he or a she. I don't know. It's 2018. We don't, we don't care about gender. <laughs> you are such a... It can decide for itself. Goodbye. Oh, I was hoping it would hit the camera and then it would like cover, cover it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> if you want to subscribe, just hit this bad boy up here, that big fat rhino. If you want the newest video to the right, if you want the recommended to the left, and then of course our personal dick, dick pic. Yep. Right below. So thank you for joining us once again, and we hope to see you next week. So peace out. Peace.